So today I want to talk to you about wheel safety. And this sounds all boring, but it's quite important. And many of you, your first introduction to heavy goods vehicles will be in buying one to convert into a, a camper. Maybe you've bought one that's already been converted or you've contracted somebody to build you one. Now it's possible that you've gone for training to be able to drive such a vehicle. And a good instructor would have taught you the importance of doing inspection, particularly the wheel nuts. But I say a good instructor, it's possible, it's been overlooked for whatever reason. So today I want to give you a little run over of why you should pay particular attention to your wheel nuts and how to tighten them so that you're confident that your wheel's not going to come off. Now the reason I say this, many of you would have done change the wheel on your car and when you do up, do up a wheel on a car you're probably using the wheel brace and these nuts are typically around 110 120 newton meters and you can do that with a wheel brace but something like this we're looking at 700 newton meters now now to achieve that if i was to put this bar this one meter bar on here I'm about 90 kilos. If I was to swing on this as hard as I can, I'm probably not going to get there. And for peace of mind, you want to know your wheel nuts aren't going to come off. Now, a friend of mine underestimated how tight these need to be and did them up just like he would on a car. And within 10 miles, his wheel was falling off. And it didn't come off, he was very lucky. He, he felt something was wrong and stopped in time. But it was, it was close, with another mile his wheel would have been gone. Would have been an accident and a lot of damage. So, the right way to do this would be to get a torque wrench. Now you need one that's going to be capable of 700 new metres. And bear in mind this is, my, this is my truck, your truck might be different, but it's going to be high. These torque wrenches, they're going to cost you for a new one, around three to four hundred pounds, and they're big and they're heavy, but you're going to get peace of mind from from knowing your nuts are correct. So once you've talked these up, even after that, you need to stop after about 50 miles, check them, stop again after about 500 miles, and check them again. With training, you may have been taught to do an inspection of your vehicle, and in particular, check the wheel nuts. Now, if you don't have these, one way at a glance is to look at the thread, look how much thread is sticking out on the end of, on the, end of the stud. If the nuts coming off, there'll be less, you might see a difference between them. Also looking to see if there's any, you can see these are a bit dirty and rusty. If they were clean, it would suggest possibly there's been the nuts moved back and forth maybe. Unlike they normally just come off, but you're just looking for these signs of movement. But save yourself the trouble, get yourself some of these. And as you said, they just point at each other. And if you notice that they're not pointing in at the other one, you should suspect something, something's gone on. You can then address what needs to take a look, talk them up. Now this happened to me in Ukraine. I drove from the UK to the Ukraine. Um, I can't remember how many miles that is. And I noticed one of my arrows was pointing in the wrong direction. So we, we took them all up, we addressed it, we checked them all. So Matt's discovered that one of his little pointers was pointing in the wrong direction on the wheel nuts. So we've whipped him off and got the torque wrench out, checked it. Right, after talking him up, it appears the back wheels, although the nuts aren't loose, they've not moved, we are able to talk them up much further than the company setting. So they were painted. Something's happened. They were painted, so I wonder if maybe some of the paints just squished down a little bit in the hot heat. So in the morning, when I start my truck, obviously this, the brake system runs off air. 
quite often that air would have depleted a little bit overnight, so you need to run your truck before you can drive it. Use that time. Do a walk around your truck. Inspect your wheel nuts. So if you've got these, it's just a glance. I just look at each and every one. Now I've got additional nuts here because these are split rims. I also check these as well. I just visually look at them, make sure they're all there. They haven't broken off because that has happened. You want to inspect your tyres as well, but I'm not going to get onto that here. This is this is next week's video, tyre safety. This is a huge issue, one many people underestimate. Um, next week I'm going to show you why you need to respect the condition of your tyres and the pressure in them. But not covering that now today. Do a walk around your truck, check every wheel, look for oil leaks, look for open doors, hatches you might have left open the night before, tools left on a wheel. Just get in the habit of walking around your truck and doing a visual inspection before driving away. I personally, whenever I stop the truck, maybe I've stopped to fill up with some diesel or take some photos, just before I get back in, I do a very quick walk around and a visual check. It literally takes 30 seconds. I've already done a proper check in the morning. 30 seconds, visual, check these are good. Now, I've discussed putting these on. Um, they are very tight and to get them off, you could use a wheel, uh, torque wrench, but I, I think this is not good practice, to be honest. You're probably gonna wanna get yourself something like this as a torque converter. You can do it with this. I've actually hurt myself undoing nuts with this. Um, if this brace slips off the nut, you're putting, in, you're putting so much effort in, you end up hitting the ground quite hard and I hurt a hand, which took quite a few weeks to heal. And when you're in remote environments, you don't want to be hurting yourself. You don't want to be putting yourself at risk. You need to assess your risk all the time. Keep yourself in good health. You, you could be in the middle of the Mugobi, the Kazakh steppe, so when you're overlanding, try and make your life as easy as possible when it comes to risks and working on the truck. So a torque converter is a great tool. What this does, it's basically got a gearbox inside it. And one turn on here with the handle gives me about 1 20th on the other end. So you get this arm here and you rest it on a, on a wheel nut, not on the plastic bit like I have there. As you turn this, as I say, one, uh, it's about 1 to 20, so one turn on here gives me about a 20th of a turn at the nut. Now to loosen these off, three to four, three, four, maybe five turns is enough to then easily turn it using the wheel brace. You wouldn't want to take it all the way off using one of these because you'd be there all day. So these are great bits of kit. This is a Chinese one. It was about 30 pounds. It comes with all the sockets you see here. Now being Ch Chinese, you can get quite a mixture in the quality. This one I've used a lot and it's worked very well. No questions about taking it away again. But I have heard of people stripping the gearbox on them pretty quickly. Now, going back to the torque wrench, as I said, they're about three, 400 pounds. They're heavy, they are big, and I think a lot of people won't, won't, won't have them with them. I do recommend them. That is my, if you ask my recommendation, it's get a torque wrench, do your nuts up properly, know that they're good. But I know many people won't do this. So the other option, is to use a wheel brace. If I do this up as tight as I can using the bar. And then I put this on and do two revolutions off the handle, which is about one tenth of a turn on the nut. From experience of using the torque wrench and then checking it, or, or using this and checking the torque wrench, I know that's about right, but we're all different. I'm about 85, 90 kilos you might be 60 kilos, 110 kilos, you're gonna get a very different result. So I, I guess my advice is, 
get a decent bar and um, I mean, you, maybe your trucks come with one of these. Do it up tight. Get some of these. Check it. Check it all the time. Drive 10 miles and check them. Drive 50 miles, check them again. Drive another 100 miles and check them again. To sum up, my recommendation is to get the right tool, and that's a torque wrench, something like a new bar. If you don't do that, and I say this because I know many of you won't, and for what, you know, it's fair enough, for what reason, I don't have one. Um, when I was traveling, one party in our group had one and we all used it. When I was alone, I've had to do my wheels up. I've done it by a method that I know is gonna achieve about right result. And, but I only know that, as I've said, by using a torque wrench to check them after I've done it. So maybe that is an approach you could use try and find something of a torque wrench to experiment a little and find out what you can do to achieve the right torque wrench setting. One other thing I should cover is the importance of not over tightening your wheel nuts. Now what happens is your studs are still they have an elasticity and what that means is as you do up your wheel nut you're effectively stretching your stud now the elasticity point it's a point at which you can you can stretch that stud and then by undoing the wheel nut you'd relax it and it would turn back to its original position if you over tighten them what you're effectively doing is stretching that stud beyond its elasticity point so it won't return back to where it, what, where it used to be so effect, effectively you've stretched it now the way these work is having an elasticity is what keeps your nuts tight. It, effectively, the stud is pulling your nut against the wheel. So you're over tightening them, stretching the stud, they're no longer doing the job they should do. Again, this is why you want the correct torque wrench and at least, at least do some checks to make sure you're in the right ballpark. Just getting yourself a 900 newton meter air hammer and ramming it on there, you, you're asking for trouble. So I hope this video has been helpful. As again, as I said, we're going to talk about tyres next week and please watch this, it's very important. Tyres are potentially very dangerous. I've seen them explode on the road. So tune in for next week. Um, subscribe for more tips. Now, this video, my channel is really about me traveling and my adventures. Videos are coming, Mongolia 2 is very coming very soon. It's not ready yet. So all the time while I'm editing my travel videos, I will be doing these shorter videos, travel tips to help you out on your overlanding journey. See you next time.